In problem 1.6.6, we're told that on each day, weather's going to either be cold, warm, or hot, and then in addition, they're also going to classify it as rainy or, or not rainy. So anytime I see a structure like this where you're first either in one set of categories and then you check another set of categories, that reminds me of tree diagrams. So I would start this with the tree diagrams. So you're first either cold, warm, or hot. The probability of it being cold is said was 0.15. They said the probability of it being warm is 0.25, and the probability of hot they didn't tell us, but we can figure that out by subtracting it. So 1 minus 0.25 minus 0.15 gives me 0.6, because all of your, each set of branches has to add up to 1 each time. Then once you know it's cold, it's either going to rain or not rain. If it's warm, it's still either going to rain or not rain. And if it's hot, you're either going to rain or not rain. So it told us that if we know it's cold, the probability of raining is 0.3. So if you know it's cold, the probability of rain is 0.3. If you know it's warm, then the probability of raining is 0.4. So you know it's warm, probability of rain is 0.4. And then it said if you know it's hot, the probability of rain is 0.5. Now, each set of these sets of branches has to add up to 1 as well. So if this is 0.3, this has to be 0 0.7, 0 0.6, and 0.5. Because again, each little set of branches has to add up to 1. Now that you have all that, then you can come over here and find the probabilities. So like this first one, to find the intersections, you multiply along the branches. So the probability of cold and rain. So cold and rain would be 0 0.15 times 0 0.3. Probability of cold and not rain would be 0.15 times 0.7. Probability of it being warm and rain would be 0.25 times 0.4. Probability of being warm and not rain equals 0.25 times 0.6. Now you'll notice in the solutions manual, they don't draw out the tree, and if they were going to do probability warm and not rain, they would do like 0.25 times 1 minus 0.4, because they're doing all of these complement rules and everything just in one step, instead of breaking it out like we are. Probability of hot and rain equals 0 0.6 times 0 0.5. And probability of hot and not rain equals 0 0.6 times 0.5. Now that I've drawn out my tree diagram and I have all of these probabilities, let's figure out what we're actually looking for. So we want to know if it is not raining, what is the probability that it's cold? So we're looking for the probability that it's cold if we know it's not raining. Now conditional probability formulas if you want a conditional probability, you do the probability of the intersection divided by the probability of the part that you know. So we know that it's not raining. So now we probability of cold and not rain over probability of not rain. So to find these, we come back up and look at up above. So cold and not rain is this 0.15 times 0.7. Probability of not rain, though, will take more work. We need to find everything that includes not rain. So this one, this one this one. We find everything that includes not rain and add them up. So that will be 0 0.15 times 0 0.7 plus 0 0.25 times 0 0.6 plus 0 0.6 times 0 0.5 which should give me 0 0.1891. So again, I do the tree diagram instead of just trying to plug it into formulas like the book does. They're also trying to skip steps and use the complement rules inside of all their calculations and that just it gets much more difficult for me. So anytime you see something that looks like it's in two stages, so first it's cold, warm, or hot, and then it's raining or not raining, draw out a tree diagram, find the probabilities for all of your intersections, and then kind of write out, try and figure out what you need.